There we go. Well, welcome you guys to our monthly um, Emmanuel moment prayer encounter with the Lord. And um, I'm super excited just to, I've had such an excitement today about our time together. And um, as I've been leaning in with the Lord of what he wants to pray about today, I just have some idea of where he's going. So I'm super excited to just lean into the Lord to see what healing he has for our hearts today. This is only streaming live in this group. And um, so I just want to encourage you, if you miss the live, then you can jump into the replay. But as you're here, we have one here. So thank you for being here, <laughs> Lisa. So you guys spend some time right now just to get comfortable. If you want to lay down, if you're in the car, please keep your eyes open. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, just get a box of tissue, get comfortable, get into a place where you're not going to be interrupted. So that way you can have this time to connect with the Lord. The whole point of our Emmanuel, which means God with us, of our prayer time today is to just connect with the Lord, right? We know that one encounter with the Lord Jesus can bring the healing that only he can bring. So the whole agenda we have today is just to be in relationship and connection with the Lord. And you guys, that looks different for each one of us. Some of us are seers, some are hearers. Some are feelers, some are sensors, where you might not hear, see, or feel anything, but you might be sensing things. There's no right or wrong way to connect with the Lord. It could be in any of those ways. And sometimes he likes to speak to us in different ways, right? He's like, yeah, you're getting too comfortable with this. I'm going to, you're going to the next grade. Instead of it's talking to you like a two-year-old, he's going to talk to you like a 16-year-old, which looks a whole lot different than like a 30-year-old, Right. So he might change up the way he's speaking to you, which is totally fine. So today, just have an expectation and an open heart to receive from the Lord any way that he wants to and that you want to, because the whole point is for you just to be comfortable to be in the Lord's presence. The only agenda is to connect with the Lord. All right. So that's all we have on our heart today. But I have an idea of where what he his focus wants to be today, but we're going to let him lead because it's always dependent on the Lord. I have no agenda, no other motive, nothing here, but for us just to have a relationship and connection with the Lord. So I'm going to do it through that Emmanuel moment prayer model, which we know that, that was created by doctors Carl Lehman and Jim Wilder. And it is really just a basic brain science of when we're in a state of appreciation or joy, we shift to the front of our prefrontal cortex right here where we're most relational. We have the biggest relational capacity in this space. So the whole point today is we're going to start off with asking the Lord to, if there's anything we need to forgive us, that we need to ask for forgiveness for just between us and the Lord. We want to have no space between us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ask the Lord to bring to mind a moment of something we actually experienced when we felt appreciation or joy. Now, it's from that place that we want to have our connection with the Lord. If for some reason, maybe you're like me, when I first started this Emmanuel Moment Prayer Model, I would go blank. I would freak out like, oh no, what if I don't get a memory? And then I would think I couldn't think of anything. If that's you, don't worry. Just think of one thing you're grateful for. The first thing that comes to your mind, think of that. And that's going to be what you're going to use. That, that Whatever that thought is, whatever you're grateful for, that's what we're going to use to connect with the Lord with, okay? So let's dive in and see what the Lord has for you today. Okay, I'm going to do an opening prayer, asking the Lord to start with if there's anything we need to confess, not out loud, between us and the Lord. So let's dive in. So Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for this opportunity just to be in relationship and connection with you. You're so good. You are so good. Father God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your deep love for us, your precious, precious children. I just thank you. I thank you that you go to great measures to show us how much you love us. You've done so much for us, Father, and you're only good. And you only have good plans for us. So I thank you, Father, for your good, good plans for each one of us, just like you promised in Jeremiah 29, 11. I just thank you for that, that hope that we have, that tikva hope that we hold on to today as we begin. 
And Jesus, I thank you that um, even as we just came off of Easter last month, of just the appreciation of all that you are, that when we get to come to you in your presence with a place of victory because of the victory that you won on the cross. And Jesus, we don't take that lightly. And we just say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love to be in relationship and connection with you. And I'm so grateful that you are Emmanuel, which means God with us and that you're always with us, even when we can't perceive your presence. You're still there. I just say, thank you, Jesus. Love you so much. And Holy Spirit, we don't want to do a single thing without you. So we just welcome you in this space. And we just say, thank you for being here. Thank you for being all the things that we need, our teacher, our comforter, our joy, our peace. Thank you for being all the things. I'm so grateful for you. I just say thank you, Holy Spirit. We're so grateful. And Jesus, even before we begin, would you bring to mind if there's anything I need to confess or any one of us needs to confess, would you bring that to mind for each of us right here, even those watching on the replay? Would you do that, Lord? Thank you, Lord. So, Jesus, we thank you for your promise in 1 John 1, 9, where you say, when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. Lord, on that basis, having been washed in your precious blood, I ask that you would um, that you would just be with us today. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come boldly into your presence, into your throne, because of we're washed in your precious blood. We just say thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we come into full agreement with your intercession, Holy Spirit, for each one of us. Lord, just as you decreed victory for Jacob, we ask that you would decree victory for each one and even those watching on the replay, Lord. We partner with you, Lord, in saying to all cosmic forces, beings, or entities, we say the Lord rebuke you. The Lord God who chose Jerusalem rebuke you. And Lord, we ask, would you forbid all cosmic forces, beings, entities, or anything unclean from harassing, intimidating, or retaliating against any one of us, Lord? Lord, and we ask that you again push it all back, that nothing can hear, see what we're doing today, but what you allow. Nothing can interfere, Lord, with our relationship and connection with you. Would you push it all back, Lord? We just say thank you for that. Thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, we're grateful for you. We ask, would you just pour more of your essence into each one of us? Will you fill us up even before we begin? And everyone watching, Lord, would you fill, fill us up? with more, Lord. More, Lord. Fill us up with more of your essence of who you are. More light pouring in. Where there is light, no darkness can be at all. So we just thank you for that, Lord. <laughs> You're so good. We thank you for that. And, and Father God, we ask, would you release every angel on assignment for each one of us? Lord, just as you did for Daniel, when he was praying, you sent that angel on assignment to, to help him, Lord, and he got hung up. And then you sent the archangel Michael to fight the battle so the other angel could be released to complete his assignment. I think it was Gabriel. Lord, I just thank you for that. You love to do it again. So I ask you, Father God, for each one of us, would you release every angel on assignment for our lives? Would they flood into the spaces where we are? Lord, I'm so grateful for their help. So grateful. And I'm grateful in this season that you are releasing the higher level angels because we need their power and we need their help. So I just say thank you for your help today. May not one of you leave 
without completing your assignment today. We just say thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And we just thank you, Lord, as you just release more of your peace. Would you release more of your peace, Holy Spirit, to each one of us? If there's any heavy thing on our hearts, Lord, if there's anything we're contending with, would you just give us that peace that goes beyond all understanding, Holy Spirit? Fill us up even more, even more. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We love you. Hmm, thank you, Lord. Oh, I know. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, Lord, we just we just ask right now, Holy Spirit, would you bring to mind a memory for each one of us of a time when we felt appreciation or joy? This is going to be an actual memory of something we experienced when we felt appreciation or joy. Maybe it was something big, a big monumental event in our life. Or maybe it was just a hot cup of coffee we had this morning. Whatever it is, Lord, would you, would you just take us there right now? We give you permission to take us wherever it is where you want to take us to today. Would you do that for each of us right here? And just keep in mind, if nothing comes to mind, go with the first thing that comes to mind. If nothing comes to mind, that's okay. Just think of one thing you're grateful for. So Jesus, will you bring to mind whatever it is that you want to today that we're grateful for or a memory that when we felt appreciation or joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take your time right here. Don't rush through it. Take your time. So as a memory comes to you right here, start to notice what is he highlighting right here? What is he highlighting? What are you seeing? What are you feeling? What are you hearing? What are you sensing? What's happening right here in this moment? And if it's something you're grateful for, just be aware of what's happening around you right now. Are there any sounds? Are there any smells? What is the Lord highlighting right here? Hmm. And right here, I'd like to ask the Lord to help you perceive his presence in this memory or in this moment. So Jesus, would you help each one perceive your presence? Where are you right now in that memory? Where are you? Where are you in the memory? Where are you? Can you help each one perceive your presence? You are Emmanuel, God with us always, even when we don't know that you were there, even in the actual time you were in that memory, you didn't know he was there. But can you show them where you are? And if you can perceive his presence, does he feel like he's far away? Does he feel like he's too far away? You could ask him to come closer. If he feels too close, you could ask him to take a step back. You get to choose. It's your choice. He wants to honor you in all of your heart. Whatever feels good and safe for you. And if you can't perceive his presence, we're going to go with the truth that he says in his word, that he is Emmanuel. He's always with us to the end of the age, like he says in Revelation. So stay in this, in this memory, in this gratitude with Jesus. 
And if you could perceive where he is, turn to him right now and tell him out loud and directly everything you appreciate about him. And if you can't perceive where he is, just tell him out loud and directly anyways. Everything you appreciate about the memory or what you're grateful for right here. Take your time. He loves to hear from you. And as you express to Jesus everything you appreciate and are grateful for, can you get a sense of what his response is? Is he smiling? Do you sense happiness? Is he happy to be with you? I know he is. <laughs> Just let that sink in for a minute. That Jesus is happy to be with you. That you bring him joy that you are bringing him joy, just being in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. And now I'd like to ask Jesus to refresh your perception of him. So it's real living in the present right now where you are, wherever you are in that room where you are, okay? So Jesus, will you refresh everyone's perception of you so it's real and living in the present right now wherever we are jesus where are you right now thank you jesus yeah hmm. and if you can perceive his presence great if you can't don't worry about it he's there even when you can't tell thank you jesus so it's in this safe place where we're in Jesus's presence. I want to ask him a few questions. So Lord, about the memory you took each person back to, what else do you want them to know about that memory or any part of that memory? What else do you want them to know? Is there a question you want to ask the Lord right here about that memory? You can do that right now. You could ask him. I'm just wondering right here in this safe place with Jesus, I would like to ask him, Jesus, what healing do you have for us right here? That memory you took us back to is very significant. And maybe there's a part of our heart that you want to heal today. Is there something in us that you want to heal? Is it something in our, do you want to strengthen our spirit? Is some strengthening that you have for our spirit? Is there some healing for any part of our heart that you want to give us today? Or is there healing for our physical body that you want to heal today? What is it, Jesus, that what healing do you have for each of us right here? Mm. 
would you reveal that to each one? What healing do you have for us? Just keep pressing in with the Lord right here to sense, feel, hear, see what it is he wants you to know about the healing he has for you today. If you can, jot down some notes. Take a mental note of what that is. But I had a sense today, and I'm gonna, I think it's a good time to go with what the Lord was kind of giving, giving me a little gentle nudge about today. I had a sense that the Lord wanted to speak to, to all of your heart right here. But he wanted to speak to your heart, and he wanted to let you know that he was he, his intention for you is that he would be your comforter that he would meet all of your needs because he has everything that we need. He's been through everything as a human, as he walked on this earth. He knows what everything feels like. Everything we've experienced, he knows what that feels like. And he's overcome everything. He won every victory on the cross. But I had a sense he wanted to speak to your heart for a minute here, particularly the parts of your heart that have been doing a really good job keeping us safe and protecting us. That part of your heart that does whatever it takes to make sure you are safe, that you can keep going on with life and that you are protected. And I just want to speak to that part of your heart for a second and say, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. It's because of you that we've made it through some really hard stuff in life. Sometimes when we didn't even know how we were going to make it through, but because you did whatever it took to keep us safe, to keep us going, to keep us moving, we made it. And I'm wondering if you even know that we actually made it. Maybe we were a little kid, a little girl, and you experienced some really hard stuff that no little girl should ever have to experience. And maybe that part of your heart doesn't know that you actually are grown up now, that you made it, you survived. And, and that part of your heart that's been doing such a good job of making sure you're okay, even in the times now when you feel stress or you feel something traumatic happens or you feel pain in your heart, that part of your heart is doing what it knows to do. It's doing what's always worked. And maybe for you, that part of your heart has been using things for comfort because it's a quick fix, right? It knows, hey, it worked before. I'll keep doing that because they, you know, it seems to be working for them. And I want to let your heart know that you haven't done anything wrong. That we appreciate everything that you've done to keep us safe, to keep us protected. But I'm wondering if you realize that that maybe that strategy isn't really working anymore. But again, I want you to know there's no shame and guilt in what you've done. That you haven't done anything wrong, and that we're grateful for you. But you may not have noticed that, A, that we made it, we're actually adults now, we survived, and maybe you don't know that that strategy really isn't working anymore, that maybe we there's a better way for us to be able to address the pain that's still in our heart, to address the trauma that part of our heart's been holding on to, right? The, our emotion part, the right part of our, of our brain is the where we carry our emotions, the right part of our heart is where our emotions are and that and emotions tend to carry the pain and trauma. So maybe there's that part of your heart that's been holding on to pain and trauma, right? And, and when we experience triggers and things now, it, it, it needs a way to get through it. So I want your heart to know you haven't done anything wrong. No, no shame off you and, and blame off of you. You haven't done anything wrong, but there's a better way. And Jesus died on the cross and rose again in victory. So that we can have this better way 
of being able to live our life, that we don't have to do all the protecting. We don't have to do all the things ourselves to get ourselves through it. When we invite Jesus, the healer, into these moments, he brings the healing that only he can give. And maybe there's a better way that instead of maybe part of your heart, the strategy your heart could be using, which I've seen a lot, which I had, this was with the Lord, this is what I experienced. When I felt pain, when I felt stress, when I felt or triggers for past trauma, I would, I would use sugar for comfort. I would want a candy bar. I would want, you know, it could be so many different things. Anything sweet, I would go for anything sweet because that's the, the sugar, the sweetness is what helped me to get through stuff, right? And, you know, if you know basic brain science, thoughts that fire together, wire together. So now every time I feel stress or I feel that same emotion, I would think of, oh, what did I do last time? I had this sugar or maybe I need that sugar or this thing. It could be different for each person. Maybe it's not sugar. Maybe it's carbs for you, French fries, potato chips. Maybe it's alcohol maybe it's a cigarette maybe it's something harder that's harder on your body maybe it's who knows what it could be prescription drugs non-prescription drugs it could be anything but again i want your heart to know you haven't done anything wrong but there's a better way jesus overcame he died on the cross rose again he has the victory and he's the one that wants to be our comfort rather than the strategy our heart has been using to keep us safe what if Right now, right here, whatever it is our heart's been holding on to, it's like that kid is holding on to that teddy bear. You see that picture of Jesus has this big teddy bear behind him going, I have something better for you. If you give me that teddy bear, I'll give you this huge one. So just let that sink in for a second with your heart. How does that land for your heart? Does that feel safe? That whatever your heart's been using to help you get through the hard stuff, Whatever your heart's been using for a means of comfort, would you be willing today to put it in a basket and hand it to Jesus and say, Jesus, I want to try this new way. I'm willing to let go of all I've been holding on to, pain, trauma. And I want to be willing to try this new way. What would that look like, Jesus? If I released the need to protect on my own, release the need for me to find comfort and let you be my comforter. So if that resonates with your heart, I want to see if you can't picture yourself, Jesus there with the big basket, just put in whatever you don't need, the shame, the guilt, put it in the basket. You don't need that anymore. If you have pain, hurts, trauma, horrible things that happen to you. You can put that in the basket too. You are never meant to go through those things. You're never meant to hold on to those things or go to those, go through those things. But life happens to all of us because there's good and evil in the, in the world. So that we're not excusing what's happened, but we're just giving your heart an opportunity to release the pain and trauma to the Lord so that you can experience and let him into that part of your heart. Because maybe that part of your heart doesn't even know Jesus. Maybe I never got the memo that there's a better way, that there is a savior, there's a healer. So I just want to give all of your heart an opportunity to come forward, any part of your heart, especially those parts of your heart that have been doing a really good job keeping you safe and protected. There's Those parts of our hearts like to stay hidden. They don't want to be known, but I want you to know that I see you today. I see you, you're seen, and that's okay. You're meant to be seen. You're not meant to be hidden. You're not meant to be all by yourself carrying these heavy burdens. You're never meant to carry those. Jesus carried it all on the cross. And today's the day that you get to be free from that, that you can hand those burdens to the Lord so that you get an opportunity to see what it feels like to let him do the protecting, to let him be the healer and let him be the comforter. He let him be the comforter. So I just invite every part of your heart right here to come forward and put in the basket what you don't need and take an exchange. Jesus, as your comforter, you will let him into your all of your heart. Would you open every door? Would you open every door that may have been closed and say, Jesus, I invite you into all of my heart right here. 
to be my comforter, to be my protector. And if it feels okay and feels safe, you can follow this little prayer after me. Jesus, I ask you to wash me in your precious blood for every time that any part of my heart, either known or unknown, has tried to be the savior, has tried to be the comforter, has tried to do things on its own, not knowing even that it's happening. Sometimes it's, it's subcortical, it's subconscious. So I ask you, Jesus, to, to wash all of me in your precious blood, for every time, known or unknown, that I have used other means to be comforted, I ask you to wash me. And I ask you, Jesus, that you would please forgive me for anyone that I've hurt, anyone that I've harmed or hurt from my means of protection that I've done on my own. If there's any person that I've hurt, through this lifestyle, I ask you, Jesus, to wash me in your blood. And I ask you, I use my will to choose to forgive anyone who has hurt me, that has caused me stress, caused me trauma. That's the reason why my heart had to use these means to protect on its own. I use my will to choose to release forgiveness to them. And even if I don't feel it all the way in my heart, all the way yet, Parts of my heart might not be ready, and that's okay. We just invite the parts of your heart that are ready. You get to choose. Jesus always gives you a choice, okay? But every part of your heart that's ready, we just invite you to release that forgiveness to anyone that's caused you harm. And I want to give your heart an opportunity to forgive yourself. Maybe you, you've been using all these different things for comfort. You know what? You did the best you could. You use the means that you knew what to use. There's no shame and guilt on that. So I invite you right here. Jesus invites you to release forgiveness even to yourself for every time that we made the wrong choice. Every time that we chose food or comfort for comfort or sugar for comfort, whatever it is you've been using for comfort. You can say, I choose, use my will to choose to forgive myself. I did the best I could. There's no shame and guilt in that. Our journey is never going to look perfect. We're going to have moments where we make the wrong choice, but I use my will to choose to forgive myself. I forgive myself for every time I've made these choices. And even I ask my body, body, will you forgive me for the harm I've done to you from the choices that I've made? I don't want to keep living that way. And I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me, body. And I forgive you, body, if I've been holding it against you. Maybe I've been doing all the right things, but body, you aren't responding the way I think you should. Because maybe I was holding on to, to, uh, to unresolved pain and trauma or hurt. So I release you, body. Forgiveness to you, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Jesus, for washing me in your precious blood. I ask you to, to, to strengthen my spirit, to call my spirit forward and say thank you. And I, I just bless all of my heart right here. And I bless my body. And I ask you, Lord, to bless each person that may have hurt me. Like you say in Romans 12, 14, don't curse them. Ask the Lord to bless them. So I bless everyone who's caused me harm that I just released forgiveness to. And I bless myself and I bless my body. I, I'm sorry for the times I've cursed you, body. I bless you. Yeah, I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, yeah. Just notice how good that feels to release all of that forgiveness and to release the trauma, the pain, the hurt, the heaviness just let it just release it all and body this is for you too if there's anything you're holding on to just let it flow to jesus you don't have to hold on to that this healing is for all of you hmm yeah and maybe if it feels okay 
I'd like to lead you into another prayer. Having been washed in the blood of Jesus, you can repeat after me if it resonates. Jesus, having been washed in your precious blood, I ask you to remove anything added by your ancient enemy. Any structures, devices, anything unclean, any, even anything unseen. And Jesus, I renounce my agreement or my agreements that I have to self-protect. I renounce my agreement that I have to use sugar for comfort or food for comfort or whatever it is that the Lord you are releasing as a means of comfort. Jesus, I renounce my agreements with that. And I ask you, Lord, to fully disconnect me from anything that's not of you. Close every door that was opened from that agreement, those agreements. And even if it came down the generational line, Lord, I come out of unholy alignment with the negative inheritances down my generational line. Maybe this wasn't even yours. Maybe it came down the generational line. You can renounce your agreement with it. And ask. And Jesus, I ask that you realign me. Father God, realign me to your divine time. Realign me, Jesus, King Jesus, to your kingdom. I don't want to be out of alignment anymore. I want to be realigned to you and your kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, just let that sink in for a second. And Lord, I ask for each person that's praying these prayers and releasing and receiving your healing, I ask, would you fill them up right here with more of your essence of who you are? Would you fill them up? Don't leave any space empty. Fill up every single space till they're overflowing. Filling, filling every crack, every crevice, even more of that healing balm that you're pouring over each one. Let it saturate every neuron, every neuropathway, every cell, every organ, every tissue, bone, marrow, spine, the space between the spine, every part of their heart. And every, even fill up their spirit with more of your essence, Holy Spirit. I even invite you, if you have, to put your hand on the right side of your head and we invite your brain to release the negative memories. Just let it flow. You're never meant to carry those either. Just let that flow to Jesus. And I ask you as it's flowing out, Holy Spirit, that you would fill them up with new memories, new memories from heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the new. You love to make things new. New memories from heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, if there's any other healing you have for anybody, would you do that for them right here? And you can ask Jesus, I want to let you into every part of my heart and I receive the fullness of the healing that you have for my for my heart, all of my heart, even my body. And I ask you for the strengthening of my spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the healing. And we ask you, Lord, you create new neural pathways of thoughts that wired, thought together, wired together. And if there's any of those addictions, Lord, particularly sugar and food for comfort, would you unwire, unhook, untwine those and give each person new neurons, new thoughts? You love to renew our minds. Would you do that right here? That we would, that sugar, comfort, food cycle will be broken here now in Jesus' name. And you get to receive the fullness of that healing. Yeah, you just get to receive it right here. Just receive it. Mm, thank you, Lord. Just receive it. Fill, fill up each person, Holy Spirit, with more of your essence. Fill them up. Even pour over again more of that healing balm over each one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you are our comforter. You are our healer, Jesus. And everyone who came to you was healed. So we thank you for breaking those unhealthy ties between food 
and our heart. That we get to make our own choices. We get to choose what it is that we want, not that it chooses for us. And I just want to um, ask you, Jesus, would you remind each person as they go about their day, even after this call, that their journey is not going to look perfect just because they might have chose sugar or comfort food in the moment doesn't mean that it didn't work. Doesn't mean that the prayer didn't work. It just means that it's a journey and a journey is not going to look perfect. But you get to choose every step of the way. And in the moments, Jesus, when they might make a choice that couldn't have been their best choice, would you remind them to ask you, Lord, what healing do you have for my heart right here? What does my heart need to know? Why did my heart pick that? No shame or guilt. No more shaming and guilting your heart. This is a no bully zone. But Lord, what else do you want me to know? Would you remind them in the moments when that happens, not if. But we receive the fullness of the healing. And the breakthrough. And we just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's not going to look the same. It's not going to look the same. And we thank you for that, Lord. Would you remind them it's not going to look the same? Because you love to make all things new. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, fill them up, Lord. Fill them up. And Lord, I wonder right here for each person, what do you want to give them in exchange? Do you have a tool? Do you have a strategy? What is it that you have for them? Do you have a verse that they can take as a sword in the moments when they feel the pressure? Oh, they hear that little voice. You need to have a Mars bar right now or you need a bag of chips. They can grab the sword and say, nope, I don't have to do that because I don't choose to do that. Maybe one day you do choose. You get to choose, but it's not going to be that, that force that you have no choice anymore. So what's a verse, Lord? Do you have a verse or a tool or a strategy? What do you want to give each person in exchange? What do you have for them? What do you have for them, Lord? What do you want to give them? Do you have a Bible verse? Do you have a, what do you have? What do you want to give them right here? Would you just reveal that to each person? You might feel, see, sense, hear what that looks like. Would you reveal that for each person right here, Lord? And I even ask, Lord, for every angel and assignment that's there, I pray that, that each one would be able to give them what they have for each person, Lord. And if you want to receive what the angel has, just put your hand out and just receive whatever it is the angel has for you or angels have for you. You just get to receive it. Just put your hands out. Just receive whatever it is. Even if you can't perceive what it is, just in faith, receive what they have for you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Whatever it is. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Just receive it. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. So. Hope that you got something really cool. <laughs> I like what I got. All right. I am going to do a closing prayer right here. So start to just stay in that good place. If the Lord has you in a wonderful place, if you're releasing, if you're receiving, you could stay right there as I do a closing prayer. But Lord, I just thank you for everything you did right here. You're so faithful. I thank you that you always, always finish what you start. And I just thank you for that. I thank you for that, Lord. And I thank you for the freedom. I have a new thing that the Lord showed me this week. Freed people, free people. I have the website <laughs> and the trademark. But Lord, I, I'm getting the trademark. But Lord, I just ask because you have freed me from sugar and comfort food for uh, comfort food as my means of comfort. Food as my means of comfort. Lord, I just release that to each person right here. I know those watching on the replay, the freedom that you've given me, Lord, I ask, would you release it to everyone that wants to receive it? Just what you have for them, only what you have for them. I just release the freedom for you that Jesus is your comforter. Eyes, I keep your eyes on him and that you are no longer held captive by other means of comfort, but that he is your comforter. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are each person's comforter. Thank you, Lord. 
I just release that freedom that I receive, Lord. I ask that you would give it to each one that wants to receive it. They get the freedom. And Lord, I ask as we go, as everyone gets off this call, that you take them deeper than they've ever gone before. That you continue to highlight to them everything you were showing them, Lord. But take them deeper. Take them higher. You always have more for us. And Lord, I ask you again, Father God, to realign each person to your divine time. That you would realign them, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you would um, continue, Lord, to accelerate that healing that you're doing in each person, Lord. Would you just accelerate that? You're accelerating it in this season, but we just say more, Lord. More, Lord. I, I just pray that you would seal everything you did today, Lord. Seal it completely that, yeah, no, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and we even say, Lord, we just say thank you for sealing it. And we ask you, Lord, that each person would only receive what you have for them, that you would wash over us, Lord. And I thank you for all you did today. I'm so excited to hear the testimonies, Lord, of the breakthroughs, that they just don't have the same cravings anymore, because now they know you can't unknow what you know. And now you know that you are free. You know that Jesus is your comforter. And we're going to keep leaning into him, saying, Lord, what is my heart, what healing do you have for my heart right here? Each time. It becomes a struggle. We sense something that's other than Jesus being the healer and comforter. Thank you for just would you remind each person, Lord, that they can come to you anytime. The memory they had, Lord, the appreciation memory, they can go back to that anytime they need to. Let me just thank you for all you did right here. You're so good. And you always finish what you start. So we say, Lord, yes and amen to that. And I pray all this in Jesus of Nazareth, your mighty, powerful name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, I hope that this blessed you. I wanted to share with you when I asked the Lord, what do you have in exchange? I got a huge beach ball, <laughs> but my hands are out like this. And it was the beach ball was as big as my hands, like as big as where my hands are. This is like this big. <laughs> Although one of those ones at the beach ones with all the different colors. So I, the Lord was telling me, you need to go have more fun. So I'm going to make sure I do that this week. I'm going to put in, factor in some, schedule in some fun and me time for myself. Because I want to play with that beach ball with the Lord. <laughs> oh, wow. I love it. So great, Lisa. I'm glad this blessed you. All right, you guys. We'll love you so, so much. If this blessed you, I'd love to hear about it. How did it land for you? What, did, what was the Lord showing you? What were you seeing, feeling, sensing, hearing from the Lord? And um, if you need to process any further with what he was showing you, please tag me, reach out to me, message me. I am here for you to help you process everything he was showing you. And I love you guys so much. We do this every month. So if you have a special request, please reach out to me about that too. I can't guarantee where the Lord's going to go because it's really dependent on him. But, um, but definitely let me know. Okay, so love you guys. Bless you. Have a great rest of your day. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Lisa.